Hello and welcome to the Conscious Club podcast. My name is Arij Tanvir Chaudhary and I am your host that welcomes you through this wondrous journey of exploring what it's like to be a human being on planet earth at this time of rapid evolutionary change because if you haven't noticed already humanity is going through an up level whether it's through technology or whether it's through just an organic evolution of our consciousness we are heading into a completely new era and through this podcast i talk about it (laughs) so if that interests you keep listening and enjoy the ride Hi everyone and welcome back to the Conscious Club podcast. Today I am so excited to host one of my best friends, Sivya Shini. She and I met last year um, through the online realms and she is such a powerful artist and speaker and visionary and mystic and someone that just honestly gets me at every level of my being and she's like one of the first people that I ever met that I felt felt that from you know like we feel like soul sisters on the deepest level and I wanted to have her on the Conscious Club podcast because like I just said she's this amazing artist and designer and I wanted her to come on to talk about what her journey has been like with that, like with artistry and um, being an artist or being someone who like really strongly identifies as an artist, but then gets born into a world with very rigid structures on what art should be and what what's good what's not good like like i guess what i'm trying to say is like being born into a reality where there's a lot of rules on creativity like at least traditionally so we start off where Thivya will she speaks about her like she introduces herself by the way she lives in malaysia um so that kind of some of some of the context will make some more sense like if you under, like she, if you remember that she lives in Malaysia <laughs> but she speaks about like her experience with art school and then how that affected her like creative drive like what art school felt like for her um, and the different traumas and lessons that she picked up along the way of moving through that kind of education system trying to teach someone actually like like she speaks about it as well like it's they're not really trying to create teach creativity they're teaching how to profit from creative sparks. So she talks about that, and then she talks about how when she graduated, how she started deprogramming herself from that back to her original excitement with art. Um, And then we also touch on using art as a method to process through our traumas, process through our really heavy, difficult emotions, um, and also using art and self-expression to like learn about ourselves learn about who we are using these different modalities whether it's painting drawing creating videos whatever it is like whatever your chosen modality is like how when you actually engage with that creative work what that actually begins to like how that actually begins to transform you at the deepest levels so i'm really excited um for you to listen to this if you are someone who is a creative this is just such a powerful episode that's going to remind you of what you already know deep down but maybe you just wanted to hear it from someone else again so yes enjoy and i will see you inside (laughs) hi thivya <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Also, yeah, I, I'm, I've already inter- introed you in the future, but the people already <laughs> heard it, so I'm not going to intro you, and we're just going to get into the episode. So, f- welcome to the Conscious Club podcast. Like I said, besides yeah. Garrett, you are the first guest, and I'm so happy that it's you because we're just like <laughs> we're soul sisters on a whole nother level. I mean, you're the first, Uh, I feel like, soul sister vibe that I ever met in my life. And I met you and I was like, what the, how are we, uh, we this thing that happens (laughs) where Thivya and I process the same exact themes 
at the same time. So we'll be going through like the same lessons pretty much, but just in different, like it just looks different in our realities. And that itself is so helpful (laughs) because it's like always having someone to, yeah, anyway. Um, I'm exciting because every time you go through something, you're like, oh, I'm sure it reach. Yeah. Yeah. And then we like compare notes and we're like, okay. This is what the universe threw at me. What did the universe throw at you? And then it's like, okay, (laughs) interesting. Uh I'll use that and move forward. But anyway, I really, really want to stop talking myself and (laughs) invite you to introduce yourself in whatever way feels best to you or honestly just what comes in the flow. Yeah. Um, As you know, we're very (laughs) flowy (laughs) over here. Only recently adding the structure. (laughs) back yeah but the structure is for the flow to flow better so. yeah uh, the question is so interesting because i just finished doing like so many interviews job interviews and now i'm like in this space in this question but i'm with you and in this space i just feel like oh i can actually just say it through <laughs> everything I don't have to. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) Um, Hi. My name is Tivia. Tivia Shini. Um, I'm an artist. And I... That's what what, um, I do. And that's what I've always wanted to do for so long. And... I'm... I've been so like just based on my life experiences I wasn't into art because I just went through certain experiences that made me really um, conscious (laughs) I just love (laughs) conscious of like the human emotions how we function, um, you know, this emotions and state of beings and mental health and all that. It started there, you know, mental health and trauma and everything. There was me. And then I was in like a lot of pain, I would say. And then I would, I think most of us, be during those times when we feel like really like low or like in pain we connect to like art in some way but for me it was like music and stuff and i just found it so fascinating that these people were like creating these things that just hit me and like made me feel seen in a time where i just felt so alone and just all the pain and everything but the way you know art there's so many forms but even just talking listening to your podcast mm-hmm. watching your youtube videos hello um it's you feel like you know those people and you feel like oh shit they're with me you know wow yeah that, that's that's the feeling i got to me that was art and i was like i want to do that because as much as i've seen and as there's so many people i love i feel like Obviously, there's no one that has your exact life experiences. I'm like, and I was like, whoa, that would be cool because based on just who I am, my background, every single thing, it matters, you know, to, it matters to see someone that has the similar background age to you because then you feel more seen and you feel more connected. It's just, that's and that 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 was the desire and then i was like okay let's do this at 18 years old and i'm like oh i don't know shit about this shit (laughs) i don't know shit about art and i just went to art school i didn't have to i didn't want to but somehow it led me there but it was necessary for my journey i guess if not i wouldn't be there but 
mm-hmm. that whole experience of being in art school as someone that just i just had the desire of like oh, i want to do this i love to be some people that do this and i don't know anything i haven't like drawn in like i've never drawn i've never like really explored anything creating anything i've consumed i've not created anything and it was so i was put in this place where or oh, i went to this place i wasn't put in it <laughs> to this place <laughs> where everyone around me had some kind of experience already like that they're there because they want to make a living out of it and so probably need to get some papers so they just want that's their way of learning but to me i went with a pure intention of like i want to learn how to do art mm-hmm. you know from scratch you know i just wanted to learn and that's where i learned that oh the system is not really designed for you to learn the education system is not really designed for you to learn it's the first thing that i would say like when i went into art school is that they they want you to be good already they want they're choosing their favorite students they're choosing who which which one of the students are going to make it mm-hmm. which one of the students is the artist you know that one person or just a few and if you are not even close to that they would this is my personal experience is first of all they wouldn't even look at you you wouldn't exist which obviously it hurts a lot and second is um they would just say like oh you just don't have it or you know they say yeah. things that imply that it's either you have it or you don't have it it's not something that you can learn no we can't give it to you 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 here to learn like go <laughs> you need to think this is is this school or something <laughs> yeah 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 and but i tried so hard but i never admitted that i tried my hardest i just this thing this this story just came to me this memory just came to me actually last night of like when um I was working on this project one of these assignments I was working so hard on it but I just first of all I didn't have the necessary equipment that I needed because I didn't know which equipment I needed you know I was so like literally brand new zero like nothing and I would try so hard I didn't have the necessary computer it was computer graphics something and then when we had to like present our assignment in front of the class the lecturer just looked and she looked so disappointed and she was like did you just do this last minute or like you know as if like i'm lazy and i didn't mm-hmm. put any effort into it and look at everyone else they put effort into it and you just like did this last night you just like scrambled it through and i was just like oh yeah because it because and that hurts because it's like you don't want to admit that that's your best because your best is like not good and of course shit i'm not supposed to be here then mm-hmm. fuck and that and no one is ever lazy like even if i did that last minute it was because the amount of emotions you have to go through while creating Oh my god when you sit down you say oh i have this thing that i want to create you have it in your head and you're like oh shit how the fuck do i do it i have no idea but it has to be this it has to be what the body looks like in my mind because if not then it's bad like this it has to be that and you have like a certain time frame you know this is an assignment you have certain time frame and then you just need to like rush and you need to learn whatever tools to make this come into here you yeah. need your hands you need your tools 
which is the earthly things, right? And like, you can use your computer or your paintbrush or whatever, everything, just the way you move your hands, the way you being able to see what, okay, you have this thing in your head, but that's just very vague. You need to like, I would say like, that's like a, a, everything on top. So now you want to materialize it. You need like the earthly things and you're connecting it to earth. And so you would reference like real life things and to see real life things and be really, really attentive of the shadow, the highlights and the color, the, the different hues. All that takes time for you to even notice it. And it's just a lot. And on top of this, all of these comments, all of this, the people around you that's already doing good. And when you come from a system, which most of us come from a system of like comparison and, you know, whatever you have in your past, whatever trauma you have in your past, plus this, it's going to hurt. It's heavy. It's heavy shit, but um, I think I just... <laughs> that was... That already, I'm like writing... Like, I wrote notes to be like... <laughs> I'm gonna like dig into that part. Um, yeah. What's really, really... Like, what really stood out to me right away was just how... You're like, well, you, you had such a pure desire to... Yeah. Learn. It's like it's almost like you were like feeling that desire to be creative, and then because yeah. of our like conditioning from we grew up, we're like, okay, well, yeah. I want to be I want to be creative. I must have to learn it from someone now, even though yeah. it was like already such a natural, it's such a natural part of all of us. But yeah. like just because of how we grow up, it's like, oh, okay, well then I must need to learn it so that I could. Well, that that was like the first thing I was like, oh, that's so. And then you get there, and it's like, what you came here to learn? What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that disconnect, right? And then also just how um, art schools—it's what you said. It's like the people who were there, they were already good, and a lot of their intentions going into that space was to have like have a living, like make a living, yeah. like make money yeah. off it. So yeah. the art school was not really a creativity school. It's more like how do it's like a pro it's like for profit right that's like most yeah. of what i yeah. this is amazing because so i haven't like revealed this to you but the conscious cup podcast this time around it very much has a theme and the theme is about like exploring the experiences of uh of human beings on earth as we go through this like evolutionary shift or like yeah. it's like huge like jump <laughs> in our mm -hmm. like evolutionary journey and up, I mean, something that just comes up, like even with Garrett, like that was Garrett's episode last week was all about the financial system and what's happening with the financial and that collapsing. And wow. so it's funny how we're also talking about that kind of a system and it's like touching in on that, that kind of for profit models yeah. that are yeah. so it's like I understand why things have to be for profit because obviously yeah. we love money and we love <laughs> having the freedom to do things and like like you said like materialize our visions into the world and that needs money but at some point people lost the plot like people lost that spark that you so purely went into art school with. Yeah. Yeah. And they lost it. It's like for so many people it's not it just doesn't exist and they don't know yeah like what the they just wake up in the system and everyone's like doing things and maybe their parents told them to go to art school because and they're like they're not connected at all to the higher fields of creativity which i really <clears throat> want you to share yeah well first you can share like your response and then but i really want you to touch on also like your perspective of that creative field and how it's like so mystical in yeah. itself yeah I'd say that the people that were there, they were so good. And I, going in, I was so fascinated. And I would love whatever everyone around me was creating. I was like a baby <laughs> seeing the world for the first time. I was so excited. And they would be like, oh, no, it's bad. Or like, this. it was, and I would get so disappointed. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you really kidding me saying that's not good or like 
I would be so excited if I were you. That's what I said then. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, but that whole experience. But um, moving through all that, I think the first year of college was me feeling not good enough. At the same time, like, I was really trying hard to, like, prove myself. But I wish, like, but looking back now, and me, when I look at videos and everything of me at that time, I'm like, Divya, you're doing your freaking best. You're, it's like a whole leap, you know, from where I was. First of all, coming from a background of there was no one from the art, any, no one was exposed to it in my family, in my lineage. I mean, like maybe far, far back, but like, you know, it was such a huge okay that's also a very important thing knowing where you, you come from your background your past not for you to like be stuck in it but for you to like really really know where you're coming from because ah, it's when when people say you cannot ever compare your journey to anyone else's it's not a cliche it's not cheesy it is the freaking truth because if you really really look at your past you know just your gender or your race and everything even though we don't want to get stuck to these labels like mm -hmm. but these things has plays a role in like from where you're coming from to see okay this has been the the history of my family we financial probably it was hard but now we're okay but we're still in the scarcity and you know but the other people that was i was around they were kind of like the majority in this country and they had the financial stability for even their parents to explore art so they grew up with art mm -hmm. they had it they had their parents were musicians their parents painted you know da -da -da -da. it was part of their lives since young, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, there's just so many things that comes into place. So you cannot ever compare that, oh shit, we're at the same age, but she can do that and I can do this. Fuck no, you're oh. so different. But also, while they were doing that, you were also learning your skills. My skills was human emotion, whatever I'm doing now, spirituality, da da da. The only thing is what I've gained at that, now it's different, but at that time it wasn't as valued as this external things. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's not. Like now everyone wants this. Everyone wants a week, everyone wants life coaches, everyone is aware of spirituality and all this. So you were gaining different skills at different times. And now they, they have that, but they want. Hmm. They're like, oh, I have all this, but I still feel. It's like I create all these things. People say that they're good, but I don't feel like it's good. And they just don't feel fulfilled. And they don't want that. You know, they want to enjoy what they're doing. They want to feel proud because they've just been creating like based on external validation. And now they're like, what about me? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we come in. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Um, when you said that, like, they've been creating based on external validation, I literally just have this, like, image of people just, you. it's, like, just being so in the 3D world that you're, like, yeah. your creations are just stemming from the 3D itself, yeah. like, even, like, what you create, because, I mean, even just the structures, like, when you go to art school and they're, like, this is good and this is not good and this is what's yeah. valued in the art world and this is not, it's, like, yeah. you're not even pulling from anywhere else like you're not pulling from any of those mystical origins of creativity you're yeah. literally just like it's like just the 3d plane you're like okay what's around here okay let's see what i could like mix together here and then that leads to such an emptiness because there's no i mean at the core of it then you're just moving things around in different ways in just yeah. the 3d plane there's nothing yeah. beyond that and it just feels so i can imagine it just feels so like what's the point of this like yeah this is so boring but just think about it they probably were drawing in school and then everyone was like whoa damn yeah. that's nice and they get addicted to that yeah. yeah if they do something that's different they'll be like oh the other one's nicer yeah 
yeah. know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, like for me, the creativity and that desire to make videos or just it came from somewhere like it comes from somewhere that I can't even describe. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. now I can I can talk about mm-hmm. it for a while. But in terms of like this podcast, like it's something yeah. that's so of um, ethereal origins, like what you were saying earlier, when you when you're creating art, like you're trying to take what's up here. And it's like a lot of people who aren't in tune with their spirituality, they might interpret that as like, oh, yeah, just some mind conceptual stuff. But like when Divya says, like, you take from what's up here, it's like, yeah, your mind mental stuff, but then also like everything that your that your system is connected to. (laughs) Um, And I'm curious to know, like when you okay i mean i guess we're gonna talk about that too because you've talked about like your art school experience and how that was for you and then we're gonna talk about like coming out of that and graduating and what happened there but yeah right before that i want to sorry about the dogs barking but i don't might just be a part of it (laughs) um i want to ask you about like when you have the urge to like create something how does that like how do you how do you recognize that like what what does actually what does it feel like that desire to bring something through <laughs> well excitement it's just you get really excited for me it's ah uh, i would just surround myself with everything that mirrors that like with songs listening to like everything will just align it just feels like every time i listen to a song and that idea is already there it's like mm-hmm. growing it's it was it's like just a seed that i got excited about but like you keep watering it and just keep growing so that's part of the process right it's yeah. not just about like doing it this growing this and then you know with my zodiac shoots i'd be mm-hmm. like oh okay aries so like leo you know this is like, I have like a few keywords, but usually by the time I want to do it, I already feel so strongly for that particular zodiac. And I would just have to like imagine and ask myself daydream about it. I love daydreaming, just daydreaming and basking in it. And then once it feels like, okay, if that feels complete and I would slowly like, I would do like a list and like break it down into small chunks. Just my my new process now because I realized that previously I would have these ideas, I would get excited about it, but then I would have panic attack right after because I'm like, fuck, I can't do that, bye. And then I'll be disappointed in myself because I didn't create it. But yeah, I, that's like the very recent process, but I think I want to share after the art school, how I got there. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So at the beginning of art school was me um, feeling like I'm not good enough, but still trying my best and everything. And then getting all these outside influences. And then I got really upset with like lecturers and stuff. I started like closing myself back in. Then I went to do my degree in film school, which was, it wasn't even something that I really liked. I just chose it because I was like, oh, the thing that I feel like I'm most capable of is like photography and all the other things didn't really align, but this one seems interesting. So I just feel that. And the judgment there, the that's just basically like a really toxic page just because they really, really, um, how do I say this? It's all about luck. It's all about the chosen one. It's all about, you don't even get, um, the, 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 I would say the base of education systems is the lecturers, right? It's the teachers and everything. And they were just not it. They were so wounded from probably their own experience that they 
they were just constantly seeking again for the one mm-hmm. that student that's going to give us the big name that student that's going to change everything and you know that talented student and those students are usually the ones that are already so experienced obviously they've probably worked in the industry and they just came i don't know for what they came but they just came and basically the lecturers just they just stick to them like leeches and they just they have their favors and everything and you know it's basically like so much politics into it and then mm-hmm. so when i saw that i was just like okay fuck this shit close you know and that was easy for me because calm and stuff so like oh yeah i've seen this before close it was so easy for me to shut off for like i didn't even try giving my best because i was like it's not worth it mm-hmm. and so i don't really care about their comments or whatever because i'm like whatever it's not this isn't even me like this is not me it's not my best even it's not even a little bit of my best mm-hmm. so i don't give a shit what you say that was easy you know it's like by beats <sighs> that was my experience in film school really shut off and then i was constantly seeking to do other things and even there was assignments i would just avoid it until the last minute just because i'm not interested to do it you know i don't want to do it and sometimes i would like try so hard to do it like cheat myself but it's i feel like my self betrayal came from that when i would try to like make like a, a schedule for me to do the things that i don't want to do uh-huh. <laughs> you know <laughs> you know, really, really, yeah yeah <laughs> and but it just wouldn't work and again you feel so stuck and you just start beating myself up and then like i'm like oh, i'm not like them but i don't even want to be like them yeah <coughs> yeah <coughs> sorry um it's okay yeah so once that was over i think at the end right at the end something and something happened in like college that really made me snap in a way of like not snap at people but snap at like fuck shit this is not right i'm over it and especially i think the thing that really lit up that fire was i was like a really quiet person a reach are you there okay yeah <laughs> yeah i was like an introvert and i had like a few friends that was introvert as well and we were really really shut down because they're like your the entertainment industry they want loud people they want mm-hmm. so those who don't talk as much they think we're useless but we're actually so creative you know we just feel really attacked by you so we don't want to show it and i just was like appreciate and i would just i was really really determined to like i'm on my way out but like once i get out i'm going to like speak on the behalf of all of us i'm going to change everything and i'm just going to like live my best life and like be true to myself and then one day they're all going to look at me and they're going to regret what i was doing <laughs> there was like my driving force like legit for like at least a year and at the end i stopped tolerating people and i started it was that that was like my full masculine line i would say i would like because people were rude and people would like really look down on you and i started standing up to them and i started like giving back to them if they were rude and that 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 and you know it was the first time i spoke up not just based on this whole art school thing but just based on like even my past family a trauma to the da it's it was like a huge liberation process for me because it was like the beginning so obviously like it was messy because like you finally feel like you're able to like say it mm-hmm. it was not perfect obviously like obviously i 
maybe it sometimes i was overly rude da, 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 but it was necessary you know and then i came out and then i made a reach <laughs> really okay, like but how often after i mean how close was that yeah, when you graduated at the at the end of the college years was when i started watching youtube videos and then oh. after i finished after like a few months that's when after i finished only then i downloaded instagram again and that's when we started, started. talking yeah yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> oh my god okay talking about this it's so important to say that so at the end of my college years was the pandemic so i was at home not at college campus mm. so that's when um all the classes were online so i would mute the classes and i would play a reels video and and i was like because i was in film school and there was no drawing or whatever i was like okay i want to take this time time to like learn drawing because in my foundation years that's what we did but i was so new at it and it was so intimidating but that's not my main thing now so it feels easy to do that so i went on skill share <laughs> and and like I took the time and I learned and I practiced painting all for the first time and that was it was first of all scary but I just set really low expectations for myself like I was doing like trial sketches for like three months like you know just drawing circles rectangles and perfecting that not even perfecting that but just doing that for three months. three four months only then i started venturing into like uh what is it gesture drawing basically whatever mm-hmm. and and then painting it was i was really having so much fun because there was no expectations it was just for me i really enjoyed it but i also noticed that when i started painting i would get at the end i would get so stressed i would be like it has to be perfect and i would like seek validation from all my family members and if they didn't give the reaction that i wanted i would be so upset and that's really? like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's where um it started and then i think my true the first time that i really really um dived into okay i want to make this a healthy process for me mm-hmm. when i recognized that oh shit this is unhealthy this isn't how it needs to be was i think long after i started talking to you probably i don't even remember when i don't remember the timeline but i think it was when i had this idea i was like You know what I've never created actually anything that's from myself. Mhm. Cool. Cuz even the drawing and the painting are just looking at references, right? I was like I've never truly created anything that's truly from myself, my innermost core and that's what I've always wanted to do. So I was like what do I want to do? And at that time I think I was obsessed with like zodiac signs and this astrology and that was the beginning of me getting obsessed with it and I was like Oh. What if like I and I was also really obsessed with uh my culture because <laughs> the whole thing of like previously like I was you know when you experience racism and everything you feel like an outsider and everything but this was like me like reclaiming it and and saying that no I I am actually proud of this and this is actually so cool it's not weird it's not too indian yeah <laughs> it's wait not... also what just yeah. to, so you're 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 in malaysia yes right? i Did am you, were you born in malaysia yes i was born okay. in malaysia yeah yeah uh... <laughs> and you were facing you were facing like that feeling of racism like discrimination yeah. and things because you are indian in malaysia indian indian yeah. in malaysia because we have chinese and malaysian and also other ethnicities but the majority is like 
Malays, Indians, and Chinese. Mm. And I was always surrounded by Malays and Chinese most of the time. And even if there were Indians, it was just not on the same. You don't. I don't resonate with some of them, but also like you don't resonate totally with the other one. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, anyways, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Talking, okay. Yeah. The Aries. So I was yeah. like, why don't I? Because I have. Because one thing that I've noticed is that I use like astrology and all this personality tests or like human design or anything. It's whenever like people like especially in astrology it's so prominent for people to say oh this has been toxic traits of xyz you know yeah. and i was just getting annoyed with that because i'm like no if like you're truly in that in a healthy highest form of that that sign the, the qualities of that sign it's actually really needed for like all of us and mm. i wanted to like interpret that and then I just was like, oh, let me do like an Indian goddess for each um, zodiac signs. So I started and I started getting a lot of panic attacks. Like, mm. a lot. It was so hard. I don't, like, even till today. Okay, I would say like today it's way lower, but that intensity of like you knowing that you want to create that and just the, the it's so scary it's it's so scary it's like exciting at first but it's so scary it's so debilitating mm-hmm. that because you're like oh my god i'm just first of all at that point i just downloaded instagram after three years of not using any social media like and I've always been like someone that's quiet. I'm like, am I really just going to like come on here and post like a confident person when I've always been the shy person and like quiet and like, you know, just nothing. And now I'm just going to come here <laughs> and like with all this makeup, whatever makeup or like just even like the poses of like showing that I am here I'm be you know taking up space basically like are people is everyone just gonna think i'm weird or are like people gonna be excited like what what's gonna happen you know and like why did i need to think about if other people Mm -hmm. like i was thinking about other people's reaction to it and i still did care i still did almost like oh shit okay people like it i feel safe you know i'm not gonna deny that they were still there but i think um so i did avis towards gemini cancer and then i felt like okay i don't feel like doing leo yet but that was so scary because i'm like oh no but everyone's like so excited about it how can i just not do it because like what does that say about me like i just started this and i didn't finish it what the fuck <laughs> but i just couldn't and i just know it wasn't time but yeah do you want to ask anything before like i elaborate yeah i, I just even, ask, yeah yeah even that <laughs> i think i'm gonna if if you give me permission to i think i'm gonna like paste some of the work that you're talking about in the video yeah. um, uh-huh. because we were like you were like working we were in like that one-on-one space at the mm. time i think when you re- first started i mean i remember the first two we were in the that one-on-one yeah. like regularly yeah. meeting space and i remember just like it felt so like i don't it, it, you could tell that it was like a huge jump in embodiment from how mm-hmm. your body has been like how you've been like used to being you know like what you just said yeah. it was like you were so I feel like it was so repressed over that like you had that really just like confident pure spark and then you entered into the system that kind of just tangled it all up 
and then you come out and luckily that spark's still there and it's allowing you to like be excited about doing things that are like you're still connected you know like you still understand like okay well I still know what I want to create and I want to honor my Indian heritage and honor astrology and this like art through my work and so you like start doing that and then you're like okay but like this is so weird because how am I supposed to how can I just be confident all of a sudden (laughs) I'm not used to like people and also it's funny because it's like well other people aren't used to seeing me confident so how are they gonna react and it's like so many layers and that is so it just again like we were talking about before we started recording that like quantum leap energy that everyone like quantum leaping for anyone who hasn't um heard of that term before it's very like people refer to it it's kind of like you're in one reality and then within a very short period of time you're it you like your reality just shifts really drastically um and it feels like you just leaped timelines like usually usually the way people's lives change is very like gradually and slowly but quantum leaping is like it's only like a matter of a few things happened and then now you're just like living a completely different like the situation of your reality is different but that is almost like the inner you the you that was like I mean the you that ended up posting all of it you were like yeah let's fucking go like that that's who I am inside like I'm not this shy little like beaten beaten down like repressed and like insecure Divya like I'm this bad bitch who's like ready and the poses by the way when you started posting that like I still um I like that is something that is on my list of things that are so out of my comfort zone that I eventually want to have photo shoots that can confront that part of me that's scared of doing exactly what you did in that those uh zodiac photo shoots um but I was just gonna say like It's funny because there was a part of you that's like, no, we're ready. Let's fucking go. Let's do this. And then you had to. And then there was like another version of you that was having panic attacks. And it's like, no, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. Like, I need to stay. I need to stay in this like safe, small, Mm non-visible place because you're you're also so traumatized by like other people's comments, probably from like art school and everything like that. You're like, I actually don't like I want to create but I don't want to show even though there was a part of you that was trying to show your art because you wanted the validation but I am just like pointing to all the different layers that got evoked in like that got un un or revealed when you started thinking about doing the zodiac photo shoot and so I want to touch on that too like when we have like a creative idea come through it's a whole of fucking initiation (laughs) It's scary. every single thing like it's like we we as we were saying like when people in art school are like the very like 3d art like just yeah. people who are not attached to what creativity actually is and how it stems from somewhere far beyond just this human incarnation mm-hmm. they don't they're so they they don't realize that when you have a creative spark that comes through, it's literally there to mold you as a person. And so it wants to come through you, but in the process of coming mm-hmm. through, it tra- completely transforms who you are. You are, yeah. And it's exactly the same. Like the best way I can describe it to people who might feel that that explanation is too abstract is it's literally like motherhood. Because motherhood Whoa. is motherhood is like a physical human being that comes through, and then yeah. while it's like processing, you're a completely different person once that yeah. being is out in the world. It's the same Whoa. thing with creative huh. projects, whether it's the the, in, the Instagram like photo shoots, like the Zodiac. How do you how what do you call those? Do you call it a photo shoot? Like how do you describe that collection? <laughs> Oh, let's just say it's a Zodiac collection. Zodiac Indian collection, version. Yeah. 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 Whether it's that, whether it's a YouTube video. Actually, YouTube videos are, I feel like, a little more comfortable. I feel like short-term projects are less initiate, like, less intense sometimes and in how much they change mm-hmm. you. But, like, for long-term projects or things that involve a lot of um time and effort and thinking like the longer it is the more it will change you and yeah 
for me, the long term projects are very much like the like even for this, like even the Conscious Club podcast, like this is something that I'm yeah. gonna be doing. I want to do it forever. Yeah. Like I just want this to be my yeah. like, something that I do primarily. But even this, like just just me starting this podcast has already changed the way that I see myself. Like I'm like, oh, I'm just yeah. having, I'm like someone that has podcasts and invites yeah. guests on, and I can host that. It's like so cool. it, it's such a like create creative projects and everything is such a powerful way for us to discover ourselves express ourselves and yeah. also just like find the different versions of ourselves that we want to be and I think yeah so <sighs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh there's there's just so much okay i have i have two things actually three things yeah. <laughs> One thing I really want to touch on, I don't know if this is going to come up in flow again, but I've yeah. always been really curious because you've grown up in Malaysia and of Indian descent, but you said something about how there is this one art school project where you didn't have the, like the tool or something, like the computer or whatever, and then the, yeah. the you didn't have the proper access yeah. to the proper resources to, yeah. and then you got called out for being lazy. Yeah. So how, for someone who is more of like, okay, for me, like when it comes to things, it's it's like I'm my creativity is very digital, like it's very virtual, like I. But yes. but for someone who wants to do like painting or drawing and things like that, like but they don't have access to the resources or like what they think yes. they need. Well, even you don't know me, what you don't know yeah that's I mean. it's like you go into it as literally blank i was like i don't know what i don't know and it's like and you start oh. okay, that's and then you know it. what you need and then you yeah and also that's there's it. like a re resourcefulness i find that comes like i think there's a there's this we have we all have such a collective like imprint of what we think an artist is and what an artist should be and mm -hmm. what an artist should have and it's yeah. like, yeah, like if you desire those things and that's amazing, like go for that. But those are not like, you don't need all of the best that. tools to yeah. start bringing your ideas um, oh into uh -huh. like material reality. Yeah, you don't. You really <laughs> don't. And, and, and for me, like with you, some people always ask me like, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I don't have this, I don't have this. I'm like, I literally, st I. I'm like one of those people that started on my like iPhone 5s. It was like shitty. Like mm -hmm. my first video, if you like go back on my channel, it yeah. was I had propped it up on a bunch of shoe boxes. But it's like mm -hmm. if you have that actual like true spark and desire, yeah. it won't matter to you. <laughs> you just want to yeah. get it out. And then as you start getting it out, and as Divya said, it's like you don't know what you don't know, so you have to just start. And yeah. as you start and you start bringing your stuff through, and you get used to it. Honestly, the universe begins to yeah. bring those tools to you. It's like it's like you almost yeah. have to get ready. You have to like be ready and like get serious enough. <laughs> yeah. About because it. Because even if then... you have the tools at the beginning, and you're like, okay, what the fuck? You don't know how to use it. You don't know how to use it to its full yeah. capacity. At least, and it's like it's kind of the same thing. It's different when like you don't have anything and then you try to do it and then there's like, oh, I need this. And yeah. then you get it and then you fully invest yourself in that particular thing. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. so two things because I don't want to keep you here for too long. <laughs> two main I don't mind. <laughs> One is I want to talk I want you to talk about how, because a huge part of your work at this point in your life is very much about what you were saying about like processing emotions through creativity. Mm -hmm. And how did you discover that? And what do you mean? Like, what does that even entail for you? I, okay. I'll just say that so I've always wanted to create art to like express how I truly feel that raw emotions. But when you're just beginning, you just don't know how to do that. And so what I started doing was at the very beginning of my art school journey, and I didn't realize this until like 
I think recently I started to practice back again, probably like last year. And I looked back, looked back at my things, and I realized there's one small book of just me and like it's called oil pastels, like me just coloring like every day probably or like whenever I feel like it, just coloring each page with nothing in mind, just letting that's basically letting whatever that's inside to flow because I don't, your mind doesn't know. It doesn't know. And I didn't know at that time, I didn't know anything about like how much da, da, whatever, but whatever that's inside that it's like locked away. It's not, it's not locked away somewhere that you can't access. Like when you do those things, you're giving it an opportunity to flow out. Mm. It's like the beginning of it coming out. And that's that's when I started like flowing, I would say. I have this practice, I have this book. I can, er, I have a read, but if each one is there, you can watch it on my Instagram. But it was just it's not about how it looks at all. It's not anything, it's just about that practice, when I was doing it, I just felt so free, so relaxed, so good. Or sometimes I feel angry, sometimes I feel so upset. And you just don't know how to process. At that time, I didn't know anything. Like, you don't know how to process, you don't know what to do. You're just like, <sighs> you don't know how to solve anything because the reality is like the thing that you need to solve is like so huge. It's like a huge thing. So like slowly, this is like a part of it. It's like slow steps so that once you get to that main point of like the whatever trauma that you want to like clear off, at that point, it's just, you just have to take a piece of puzzle and just yeah. so much work has been cleared, but you didn't even realize you think that you were doing nothing. No, yeah. <laughs> your body was clearing through so much. That's how like I started like just releasing whatever. And that practice, I was like, this is art. This is what I mean. Yeah. When I say people, when I see people who create and you can feel it, you feel it. When you see the Instagram post and you know that their heart is in it, you feel it. And so, like, I'm like, this is what art is. Like, oh, fuck, whatever they say. Whatever that. It just, it's not relevant. Like, yeah. yes, to make money, this may not do it. But what is art to me? Yeah. And it the thing is, about. like, it is even that, like, that's, you're preparing your... Uh, that's the thing like p i feel like people are so we're all waking up to the fact that these systems like the they're just so they're empty like they feel empty it's like it's, it's not like, even about the money it's about yeah. fitting into that yeah. clog of economic economic clog because true art is you're gonna be rich as fuck just not yeah. instantly yeah yeah this is all building you know the instant gratification thing. this yeah. is all like building blocks and it's so necessary and people will like love it's just it's yeah. just part of it yeah that's you that's a huge fuck. piece yeah 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 because that's what i noticed with traditional sales and marketing and everything too it's like they're just trying to see like what's the easiest way like <laughs> what can I do to just convince and manipulate someone to think yeah. that my stuff is good instead yeah. of being like what can I do to actually make my stuff really good how what can I do to improve yeah. my skills and like that takes time but it's like once you actually do that people like Divya said like they feel it they feel yeah. it and they want they yeah. you're you magnetize people yeah. and it has you don't have to do like crazy like marketing things and like clickbait stuff or whatever yeah. like people feel you people feel you people refer you to one another like it's word of mouth starts flowing yeah. like yeah uh yeah and and it's like when you were saying that when you just process your or when you when you for example are just expressing yourself with the like oil pastels in just your little notebook that you know you're not going to share with anyone 
the image I got from that was very much like as you're doing it, it's almost like pulling through that thread like of that tangled mess that like of trauma and all of these different things that live in our body. And when we express ourselves, those threads begin to start like coming out and you start noticing like what you said, like sometimes you have no idea what's in you and then something you'll like do some sort of creative self-expression kind of work and realize like oh shoot like this is a huge (laughs) thing and this didn't even start with me like this specific flavor of trauma it's like oh I can see how I'm affected by it I can see how my mom's affected by it how my grand like I can see it what you were again like talking about lineage and where you come from that is like if you are someone that wants like felt really connected to when Thivia said that like know where you come from and that's how you really begin to stop comparing yourself to others which I think is just brilliant because that's so fucking true like yeah we we literally all come from we're all at such different starting points that there's no and and different areas too right like it's not like it's just like one one layer of starting points it's like what you said it's like you also it's like you were very more much more developed in the spiritual and emotional and all of those yeah. realms growing up yeah. and then the, your peers from art school were like really skilled at the material like manifestation yeah. part of it and then now it's flipped and they're they're like at the like yeah. behind you and that but anyway so it's not really just yeah. one one layer or anything but yeah. that uh that's that's and and i think that's like traditional therapy as well like when you try to process your things like that's also just you self-expressing right it's now it's just yeah. someone sitting in front of you and you're like having a chance to just speak mm. but that self-expression piece like allowing yourself to see what's going on inside you that your mind like Thivia said your mind doesn't know what the heck's going on <laughs> you'll it's sometimes good. feel a feeling and then you have to give that feeling attention and mm. kind of sit with it and if if you want to like process it through art etc and then then it's going to reveal what's underlying yeah. it and it's a whole it's a whole process and you can get better and better at it over time <sighs> it's just so liberating to like not oh okay i think the thing that's so beautiful about this practice is I don't hold myself back at all. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not filtering through anything. You're not policing yourself. Like you're just, it feels like you can just do whatever the fuck you want. And that's what we want for like our daily life. Yeah. But that's like a huge step. But this is kind of where I started. Like I shared recently the other day, I was feeling this such, I didn't, I didn't know like what I was feeling, but I was kind of mad at, I was there's this, this perfectionism voice while I was at work. And when I came home, I was like doing this practice of like the art festivals. And then I noticed that that voice was like, oh, this actually looks pretty nice. Let's just hang it up on my wall. Then I was like, fuck no, I'm going to tear this down. First of all, I'm going to scribble through this, make it so ugly for you that, you know, that, that when you have perfect, that perfectionism voice and there's something nice and you ruin it, you know, that voice is like, ah, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> that, that pain, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to torture you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that video was so funny <laughs> and that's okay that's actually something that Thivia is this master at I like processing through her thing okay so we each have like all these different versions of ourselves that live within us like there's like what Thivia said like the the perfection is perfectionist and then there's like all these other there's like our inner child and there's all these other versions of us that live within us that make make up who we are like as we express and Thivia has honestly I feel like it's a whole modality of your own I know like you derived it from somewhere but 
yeah. or part of it but you've like made it so much your own and it's just a, she does this thing where she will just completely let her whole being be taken over by that one character inside her so like the perfectionist yeah. and she'll just be able to be like completely be able to understand like which one is her true like divine aligned self and that's mm -hmm. where she, like her observer point is and then she'll be able to see like okay this is a perfectionist and so she sent us this video in our she is in my uh, liberated group she Love. sent a video in the group chat and it was just her like drawing and then telling us about what you just said it's like your perfectionist <laughs> is like oh like oh wow this is actually pretty good and then her being like oh yeah you like that fuck you <laughs> <laughs> it was just so funny and I've never seen anyone it was just I don't know like it just it just it's a pat a pattern interrupted me I'm like why aren't yeah. more of us doing this because we totally can interact with those so many yeah. of us like be like oh I, I'm such a perfectionist and we disempower ourselves and act like we can't do anything about it. like th yeah. that's just yeah. it like oh fuck like yeah. I'm I'm fucked I'm, I'm a perfectionist yeah. yeah like I can just never <laughs> like whatever get over it but the way that you process through those you're like oh i see you as what you are like it's just a different entity within me yeah. that has been formed by other people like from yeah it's all not even me yeah 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 you can hear like sometimes it's sometimes like there's a voice or character within you that's just a direct representation of, like for me like a direct representation of my dad or a, it's yeah. like they live inside you <laughs> yeah and it's through Wrong. watching you like part of your work is also about like as you ex let those parts of you express they are then freed yeah and you stop identifying with them and then you you're i i see you like i witness you at this moment in time you're just picking out all of those piece characters within you that you're you don't want to be like be embodied as anymore or you don't want to give them the vessel like your own vessel to be embodied yeah. and you're just isolating them like listening to them understanding what they're trying to you're not like get the fuck out you're like okay let's see what do you actually have to say like why are you here and you do yeah. all of this processing work around that and then they're free and then you and then it's like Thivia shows up again and it's like she's just completely it's like you can just see the the leap that just happened because you like let go of that inner personality and you just do that so so yeah. well and I really I don't know when you'll have the space to do this stuff but uh. I really foresee you walking other people through that kind of a process because it feels such a unique thing to you like if you, I've I haven't seen anyone do it like I've seen like life coaches and there's so many people who do healing work, etc. But this feels so unique to you. And so uh, just so you. like, yeah, I, I don't even have the word. It's just, it's so thivy. It's, it's like your genius, like that, I mean, part of your genius. And yeah, I'm really excited for the day that you can help you can do a session with me because <laughs> you're so good <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess, yeah. That's the thing I'm saying, like, like some things, it feels like I just heard of, heard about it once. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I know, I'll do that. And yeah. it feels natural and it feels, it takes a lot, but it's just so, so helpful to, like, I think the reason why people get, it's, it's when you think about it, I don't know if some, I don't think people, that would listen to this podcast would think this but some people would probably be afraid of like well is that like split personality disorder or something like oh, that oh yeah you know that's yeah. that aspect of it as well but this but, is like you fully conscious and like this is how we can use our human our, our this is the human self just it's just so much it's so diverse for us yeah. to use yeah we're not an animal that we're not animals where this thing is set for us. We are so adaptable. There's just, you're just denying it, you know, if you yeah. say that, oh, I'm just this one person. No, you're obviously yeah. like so many different person. You're not yeah. the same person. 
you are with me then you are with your partner and that's okay that's yeah. totally natural it's not wrong that's how it is but yeah. yeah yeah and it's all the and like each personality and i know what you mean like pe- people from like a very like western it's like split personality but the way that i perceive split personality or i think they call it disassociative identity yeah. disorder that's like an extreme where yeah. you can no longer like you don't know where your center point is like you yeah. don't know where your you don't anchor a reach yeah. is or your anchor yeah. thibia is like you don't have yeah. that observer you're just completely in that other personality um yeah. but it's like each character and each personality is it's like you're you're channeling different energies with each oh, like what you said about it's like who i am with garrett is different than who i am with you because i'm chan- there's different energies that i'm like bringing forth yeah um based on that and like you said like there's nothing wrong with that like that's yeah <laughs> as long as it's authentic and you're not like on a script and i'm not like oh this is how i need to be as a girlfriend or as a partner and this is yeah, how i need yeah. to be as a fr- like as long as it's not scripted like it's amazing that we're i mean multi-dimensional right yeah. like we're, yeah. uh okay. wow yeah multi-dimensional and so the last thing that i want to talk about before we end today is i really want to bring this back to like more of a high level collective yeah perspective and i want you to talk about the power of social media and the internet and how it's changing the artist game whoa <laughs> it's I love social media. It has been my savior since like me too. <laughs> since so long oh my god. For us like by just consuming people who create like people like you, you know, and then the experience of using it to like like there's no rules for the first time like to get your art or whatever you create to be shared with the world you don't need to go to like a fucking museum or like mm-hmm. to the cinema or whatever you just get to you just get to share it and there's just so many type of people in the world and the people that's for you is for you and they're not going to find you just at the museum or just at the cinema you know this to the the fact that social media is here and like all of us have access to it i mean most of us have access to it and like this just it's just why this like no even though there's like in some places there's competition like but there's actually no competition at all because the people that's for you people that resonate with you can 100% find you and also that person might be attracted to like a few different people like you get to create your own concoction of like it's so cool like it's like your own recipe of like whatever you love and everything and yeah that's it's so different than the whole art school vibe where it's like this it's is what so you different. have to yeah. create and it has to look like this and feel like this and mm-hmm. Mm. this is like yeah no like you have no other option than to be who you actually really are because if you are not that you're going to attract people who you don't even want yeah so like it's not even an option you like need to be yourself yeah which is what you want but you're just afraid because of whatever million reasons yeah 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 and there's definitely like i think people seem to hyper fix say on the negatives of social media but mm-hmm. again it's like something that i always it's like social media again like everything it's like a, it's the tool and yeah. there's people like me and Thivia who are like we're we're so grateful for the freedom yeah. literally like yeah. the freedom that social media yeah. brings to people who are creative and for, for like this is like something we that, found each other yeah. through social media <laughs> and yeah. like a bunch of other sisters and so yeah. like a connection that i've never ever had before just yeah. by like being my true self that i've never ever ever shown to anyone and this is what i get yeah real connection yeah. again these amazing people who are like so fucking cool to hang out with 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. it's like when you make art in the traditional old way of doing it, it's like you would make something and you would have like a perception of who you wanted this art to be for. Like, for example, if I make yeah. something, I'm like, okay, I really want to inspire South Asian women who are, etc. right? Whatever. Yeah. You have that as an idea. But then in the, in the old paradigm, you had to go through someone who was like, yes, this is good. Like you had to go through like a middleman, middleman. Yeah to yeah. approve of your work and then yeah. they would help you reach the people that you're intending to reach but with social media and with like the fact that we can just create our own websites now and just yeah. start posting our stuff online and yeah. there's none of it's just like you go direct to the people that you want to touch and yeah. like Divya said like those people naturally magnetize towards you and that's yeah, been my experience no way, as well there's no way they won't find you yeah like, as long as you just keep doing it like you just keep, yeah and it's like you're not doing it again you're not doing it because you you're trying to get anyone or like trying to yeah, get yeah. followers etc you're doing it because you just want to express yourself yeah and as a result of that self-expression your life around you over time right like not like yeah. also not in some gratification yeah. over not. time your life begins to reflect what you've been expressing and the more yeah. that you express your inner like self the more that your external reality begins to match up and look the way that you want it to because yeah you're allowing yourself to literally materialize your things but yeah when i started posting i was like oh people are probably just gonna say that oh it's cool that's it i didn't expect to like <laughs> this life and these connections that i have now which I would say like has been like the highlight of my life since it happened. Yeah. Like, yes, I have like a job now and everything that's nice, but. But also it's a I design say, like, job, like it's an artist job. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's, that's, I think I'll talk about that later to you, but it's, that's another, this, this job, it's like when I go into it and I'm doing the design work, it's like, fuck. It's that same feeling of like, I need to be myself because like everything other than myself, they don't want. And you know, that's comforting, but it's so scary because this is not social media, it's like an organization. Yeah. And my previous experience of organizations was the exact opposite. So it feels like fuck. It feels like a relationship, right? Like yeah. when I first got into like a romantic relationship, it was like, all your patterns start coming out. Yeah. All your family patterns start coming out. It's the same thing, but it's like, oh, this is different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's that I'm like in that. But like this time I can say I'm like, oh, okay. I can't bring this old patterns because it's literally not the same thing. Got it. Yeah. So it's like adjusting. Yeah. It's just. <sighs> wow. <laughs> This is this this episode is going to be so powerful for I find that there's a lot of people in my audience that really want to make stuff. They re they look at me and they're like, "How do you how are you just so self-expressed?" Cuz a lot of my audience is also from a background where they've been told not to be themselves. Like they've been told yeah. to like be very in like live in very specific ways. Yeah. And so they see me and they're like, "How do I even start? Like what what?" And I feel like yeah. this episode is going to be so helpful. To those people, which is honestly, ev like, everyone has that creative spark within them. Like, everyone does, but then, yeah. depending on everyone. programming, yeah, some people identify it with it more than others. Like, but even... Oh, if you so identify funny. yourself, if you say, like, oh, I'm not, like, I'm not into art, or, like, oh, I'm not that kind of person, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't, yeah. I mean, even really, like, non-artsy modalities like for example programming programming yeah. a computer is such a creative act like you are literally mm -hmm. taking again it's just anything that you're making whether it's code whether yeah. whether it's a business plan like whatever it's yeah. all we're all using create, the same creative energy create if okay. yeah yeah everyone's creative a creative yeah. yeah yeah and i do think that one of the ways that the world is gonna because right now what we're seeing is a lot of like the old systems that have been like holding up the world are crumbling 
Like the last yeah. episode was about the financial system and how that's financial collapsing. System. But at a certain point, and that point is already really started, like people are already starting to do it, but the new systems have to be created. And so like, as people yeah. like on uh, simultaneously, as people are like excavating and dealing with the traumas of the past and processing all of that. And like you said, like pulling those threads yeah. out at a certain point that stops more and we move into more of like okay so now we've cleared the slate what do we want to create again and i think more people are going to be initiated into more creative roles even as like for example as old like jobs that people thought they're going to be in this job forever like as those start coming apart too and it's like with those old systems people are going to be pressured into actually figuring out what, yeah. what why they're here what they actually uh, want to do yeah and i see that all around me yeah 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 and that is so exciting to me because this is i feel like the first time where <laughs> we'd, we'd have this kind of pressure at such a collective level that's like fuck everything like we're not it's like the secure you want security yeah. you want a certainty well too bad like you're not getting it right now so now what what are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> and then and then people birth like i mean the amount of innovation i can foresee yeah. even in the next 10 yeah. years i feel like it's gonna be I don't, I don't i can't even put i can't even like i feel like it's gonna be so far beyond anything we can think of right now because this is gonna be like one of the first chances that humanity has on a collective scale, like also had, like we're no longer all in just survival mode. Like we just need to hunt and stuff. Like we're all at that place where most, not obviously not every country, but many people are at a point where their basic necessities are met. And so building on top of that, they can actually, if they they choose to, (laughs) they can build from that internal like pure stream rather than the what's everyone else doing what's the old system look like how do i read so i'm really excited for that that's also like part of it one thing that i've um been reflecting on is that even though my art school whatever experience i had was tough or whatever i just felt like i was in that system and i it was like an observer because Mm. i feel so much that I want to create like a new system for this you know and so like I realized like even me my job and everything I'm going into the systems to be able to create something like this this is me gathering information yeah it looks like it so I'm really excited about that yeah, because I, I mean, care so much. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can well, the completely education see stuff. that. Yeah, it's like your own. It's like imagine creating your own art school after seeing uh, what doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, just a whole inclusive space, and yeah, again, like just gathering so much information. And before this, I used to be really, really mad at art school, but recently, I've just calm down a little bit and I just say to myself you know what I appreciate everything that they've done because obviously before the creation of this there's probably not even an art thing and, yeah you know that's just like a step and I'm here we're here to like better it and like you know so yeah, yeah. I appreciate whatever which is like huge for me because I've never been able to be like Okay, I appreciate my art school experience because it's just so traumatic. But at yeah. this point, I'm like, I appreciate it. I see that you've moved the needle, but now we're like, <laughs> we're jumping yeah. off. We're not yeah. like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're quantum <laughs> leaping to the next, <laughs> yeah, next spot, yeah. and it doesn't look yeah. like this <laughs> at all. Oh, yay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, honestly, for sharing your time and your presence and your wisdom and your experience and Uh, just your embodiment because you're so right. Like, I am just, I'm so happy that I'm, I have people that I speak to and connect, connect to that are like of our background, you know, like of our, and that are 
cool like we're doing some cool shit and we know that we're doing cool shit we're not like I don't I think you I think you know what I'm trying to say it's like I love that I can that's something that I really feel strong for this space like I want to all these amazing people that I've met that haven't been traditionally seen as like experts or or like whatever like we're bringing I mean we're making ourselves our own experts in our own domains and then speaking about it and then showing everyone that actually you can be your own expert in your own you can be expert at being Fivia you can be expert at being a read you don't have to be an expert of some external concept outside of you but I don't know where I don't know why where I'm going with that you're so good at hosting you're such a good leader like even in our group like you (laughs) just can't see people so clearly Thank you. Yeah, that's my, I just love it. I mean, I love recognizing people for what their strengths are and then really encouraging that because that's what we need more of. Like we just need all more, we need more things to come out that are from people's pure desires, like creations and structures and systems that are stemmed from that pure space of excitement and inspiration yeah. and i just yeah that's my passion yeah, it's about time we realize that criticism is in it's an like beating people or like just punishing people is just not working yep that's that's something that yeah and that like, all oh, of the you're coddling them or like you're being fake fuck no yeah <laughs> are you yeah. kidding me the amount of growth I've had just by surrounding by people who actually see you and take time to like recognize that and tell you that yeah. gave me so much growth in like compared to like my 19 years of life. So yeah, I don't believe you. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. That's a good place to end. <laughs> yeah. Again, thank you. I love you. And I love you. Bye everyone. See you in our group. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone else wants to join our group, uh, you can hang out with Divya like all the time. She's in liberated. <laughs> Links in the bio. It's our mystery school. <laughs>